Hey guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program The War! We are still in the save from the stream where we were putting together my attack jet. If you guys didn't know, I run a stream every Tuesday evening UK time uh, where we are designing weapons and turrets and attack jets and all sorts to come and use in this save. But this is a recording so obviously I have uh, received the new turn save and indeed I have if we go for turn one I've got to remember to delete latest that is a misleading title many many turrets have been placed down into the world this means everyone is set and ready for attack or at least this is what I have been led to believe here is our um, territory I suppose is the way to say here's the Kerbal Space Center, uh, you come left or west, whichever way you want it to be, and then you come into the desert lands that are mine to defend. So here we are at Area 51 or 110011, whichever way you prefer to take your numbers. And last time I asked you guys to vote in the comments about who I was supposed to go and attack this time, because after all, this is a democracy. I went through the mountainous pile of co comments and I've come out with a result. It was a bit of a weird result. All the countries that are around me actually received equal votes to go and get blown up. Now, there was one base. Now, there was one base that happened to get one more vote than anybody else. The vote between the kingdoms, nations, opponents, whatever you want to call it, was equal. But there was definitely one base that got one more vote than all the others. So we're going to go on a tour so you guys can decide. But we're going to finish with that particular base, whichever one it might happen to be, and test out our newest attack jet on whatever probes we happen to find there. Not to try and take over the base, but just to make sure that I fulfill my promise to attack it whilst actually giving you guys ample time to look around and decide who you would really like me to attack. We are in the Attack Craft 1. This is something we put together in the stream, as I did a mention. And I think this close to sunup, we can get on with a flying. The frame rate is real for some reason, but I should imagine that's all to do with the number of craft that are around. If I can just throttle up. Okay, a small bit of control issues there. I am playing on my control pad, which means everything has been set up custom, which means nothing works as it should. And I still haven't actually put my braking group on there at all. The frames in this area is pretty real. I should imagine it's all to do with the fact of having hundreds of parts around here at the moment. If I think about it, we're going to have well almost exactly 100 parts. There were 50 parts exactly put down in the defense stage and this one actually has something like 43 parts in it. When we uh, take off and go to the map screen as we will do, I will get a part readout for us. So I'm going to slowly pull back. Hopefully not so far that our engines get caught on the ground and explode. One of the things I did put in was SAS and landing gear control on my control pad because it turns out they are quite important. We're going to begin a bit of a turn and we're going to go do a tour. A tour around all the bases that are close to my place. We have three nations that border ours and that's about six bases. Yeah, about six bases that are the most viable for attacking. The USK is definitely the ones that we share the most land borders with. I don't know whether that means we want to create war or peace with them. I don't know. Again, this will be something that we put out to popular vote. I think maybe a straw poll might be in order if I can remember to sort my life out and do that. Oh, look at that tiny moonrise going on in the background there. That is amazing. Okay, we are going to fly straight forwards now. We're going over to these bases over here. We're going to go just check them out, as I say. And before I repeat myself too many more times, I think we're going to hit into a time lapse mode. So when I was recording this, I thought that maybe I would actually just throw some music in and do a time lapse here, but no, indeed, we are actually going to take this downtime to get ourselves acquainted with the world we find ourselves in. We are the strong and proud nation of Franco Moyoin, protectors of the desert realms. To our immediate northeast, we have the USK, claiming to be the first successful democratic nation of Kerbin. 
I dispute that also being a democratic nation. Created in 200 AK, that is after Kraken, it has had 34 Supreme Chancellors in its current Supreme Chancellor, a fellow named Jeremy J. Johnson, is well known for going on TV and fiercely defending his nation's independence. To the immediate east of Franco Moyoin, southeast of the USK, we have the strangely quiet nation of Nautilus. Intelligence reports that this nation is barren wastelands, with a strange radio signal emanating from its centre. The passionless and monotone broadcast claims to be a hyper-intelligence known as ZTech Industry Central AI. It espouses a message of world unity under high efficiency reasoning and dispassionate action. Continuing our look east, we have the Soviet Republic of Kerbin. The charismatic leader of this nation seems to revel in his many, many names and also sends out daily broadcasts telling his populace all the pieces of Kerbin that they own that aren't actually under military control. Okay, so we're coming in within 30 kilometers. It is time to change our BD Armory team from defense to attack or A to B. It was just the way we always thought about it. Now, we're not trying to actually come in and make aggressive actions here, but I feel it would be a little bit cheaty if we just flew over the top without doing any sort of defensiveness. What we're going to do here is turn on my targeting and at the same time turn on my anti-radar jamming device. Or, uh, no, it is my radar jamming device, not anti-radar jamming device. Anti-radar, but it's a jamming device. That, that's what I'm trying to say. That is what I'm trying to say. We're going to see if we can zoom in at all and get any idea of what's going on over there. Uh, I I don't think we can really not with the approach that we've got going on and I don't really want to get too close because that then opens us up for all sorts of attack um, I think we should be able to get a look though we should definitely be able to get a look uh, need to pull up a lot more let's zoom out trying to learn how this system works we're within seven kilometers of them though so i think what i'm gonna do is turn around so this is dead kerbal pit as you can see it has three turrets defending it uh, and that is about it i say that's about it that is quite a lot uh, is it firing at me already it sounds like it is but i don't see anything coming at me what is all that noise let's just fly away and hopefully everything will be all right it sounds like a chain gun i've got to say it's very loud let me just see if i can turn that down a bit it'll probably stop the noise coming through on my uh oh look there is stuff firing at me on my m microphone is what i was saying but look things are firing at me there is chaff going off bad times are happening but that's all good okay so that was the dead kerbal pit Let's try and straighten up before we crash into the ground somewhat. I'm going to turn this off because that is just a distraction. Our next target will be, of course, let's get the right place up. That's the old KSC, Lake Dermal. Oh, yeah. So Dead Kerbal Pit had lots of mountains and stuff all around it, making it very, very difficult to get at the, like, core base from a long distance away. Lake Dermal, on the other hand, nice, flat, open terrain, very easy to get an early lock on, I should imagine. Should we uh, have a look and see? Indeed, it is relatively simple. In fact, I can just kind of aim it by eye. Uh, we'll get a lock target. Yeah, and indeed we can get a lock on the very craft we are trying to attack. Pretty good, pretty good. But having flown here, I don't think this is going to be a viable target. Uh, you can see that it is kind of in a line with Dead Kerbal Pit. It's not, it's kind of off to the side somewhat. This is where I started. It, uh, despite the fact that it does join onto my territory on the map, I just don't think we're going to have this one as a live target. I think what we would rather do is either take on Dead Kerbal Pit or our next target, Dundard's Edge. So we're 30 kilometers away from Dundard's Edge Raceway, a uh, runway, sorry. It looks like it is a raceway as well, as well though, because if we have a look over to the side, there is all sorts of race stuff going on there. I think this, as our last USK recon site, might be somewhere where we drop a missile. Just the one. And I don't want to do anything too, uh, too offensive, but I definitely want to know whether I can hit stuff or not. Okay, let's try and figure out where we're targeting at the moment. At the floor, that's no good. If we can just kind of pull it up a little bit. 
Uh, I'm currently using the arrow keys to move the green marker around and then we zoom in, lock the target and then try and find one of the actual turrets somewhere. Uh, another thing we need to do of course is to trigger and have our... Oh, I didn't put the right ones on. These ones are anyway what I want to fire. And still telling me there is no no lock so let's see if we can't zoom in and find the craft we're looking for i've got a feeling we're maybe a little too far away maybe he's there somewhere he is definitely there somewhere um can we zoom in anymore we cannot zoom in anymore is that him on the end of the runway there no Okay, we're going to have to fly a little bit closer. We're currently at 10 kilometers, no, 16 kilometers. Okay, that's fine. I thought we were coming into 10, and I was like, ooh, we're going to have trouble if this is how far away. So I had a lock there. Did you see that? Where is it? I don't, I don't see the turret that I'm aiming at. I would like to be able to see it before I fire. Um, Let's just let it roll. We're getting a lock, no lock scenario. I've got a feeling he's just over to the left somewhere. Uh, the right somewhere. Sorry. I can't see any of them. Which one do you reckon is the most forward out of all those green dots there? Let's try this one. Can we see a lock anywhere here? It says it's got a lock, but I can't. I still cannot see it. I would like to get a much better visual lock before I fire any missiles. We are coming into 9 kilometers. This is the sort of range where I'm start going to start to get a little bit worried. But I think we should be okay. Now, if he's got any style, he would have put him up here. I'm just not sure. Is that a launch pad over there? Oh, is that it right there? Do you see it? I see it. I wonder how long I was staring at that. Uh, it's telling me I've got no lock. Okay, let's try and bring this back to another one over here somewhere. You. If we could get the lock there. We fired one and we're going to pull away. Ah, oh, this is too late on the pull away. And also I've pulled towards it. That's not a good idea. In fact, I'm starting to think that maybe... His uh, defences are only set up to try and have a pop at missiles, which would be interesting. Which would be very interesting. This is not the best way to be looking at this. Let's try and spin round. Oh, looking at my engine effects are definitely one of the things that really steals. Oh, something is firing at me. Uh, pulling in all the directions. Oh, in fact, there is a lot firing at me. We seem to be doing okay, though. We seem to be doing okay. Uh, I do not want to turn off of the... Which, which way are you going, spacecraft? Which way are you going? I want you to go that way and pull up. Okay. Looks to me as if we're about to get hit. Woo! Well, that was fun. That was fun. Are, are we out of lock range now? We are. Okay, so we didn't manage to hit him, and he did manage to clip us a little bit. That's all good, though. Let's turn this back off. This is, this is no good. All right, our next target, or no, not really target, but our next place to go and have a look at, I believe, is Dull Spot, part of the KSSR. Look at all this damage. To our immediate north, we have the KSSR. This is a strong and proud socialist nation, my brothers in political aim. Though with the hourly broadcast of propaganda claiming that there is true and plentiful materials for all and everyone, lead my intelligence services to be a slightly suspicious of their motives. So the efficiency on this jet is pretty spectacular. I've come from down here, went round all these bases, and I've finally come up to here where I've discovered that the KSSR somehow is hiding their bases from the base tracker, but that's okay because his defences are actively sending out pulses of radar that we can follow on and track. Or at least I assume they are. I mean, 
I presume he's put a goalkeeper on there. Anyone who's not put a goalkeeper on at this point of the game is probably missing a trick. Now, we're going to try and get a look at him through the targeting system again if we can. I say again, like we did with the USK. Um, the problem is, so I don't know what Boris has done, but somehow his turrets make me make my frames drop down even lower than the USKs did. So we're going to have a fly pass, see what's going on with that. We're still 25 kilometers away and maybe pointing up like I am is not the one we want to do. I know one thing I do need to do is put ever so slight your correction controls on my control pad because at the moment all I've actually got is... Um, roll and pitch which is the most important stuff for a plane i think you will agree apart from when i can't actually control it all that well let's come to a level flight and just pull up a little bit we don't want to go dipping too deep in the atmosphere though i'm a little disappointed about how poorly this craft uh, reacts to high altitude now where is this aiming this is the question i need to find out at this point in time is it pointed backwards is it actually pointed backwards at this point? I'm not sure. Let's, let's pull it up. I think it might be. I think it might be. Let's carry on spinning around and see where we can get it pointed. We got 20 kilometers. I seem to have lost my target. I was sure I was targeting one of Boris's vessels for a little while there. Okay, so he looks like he's on the right-hand side of all of this stuff here. So we'll get a lock in and scroll in. Maybe three is a little too much. Maybe should have just gone with two. Okay, does that look like a turret on this side? It does, doesn't it? It really, really does. Are we going to drop him a a missile or are we going to wait till we're at Arakazibo? Uh, well, thankfully, that is actually a fuel tank. What have we got around here? I have a real difficulty spotting them. I'm not sure what the the load range is, if you will. What what the height is likely to be, the altitude, the distance, more the words I'm looking for. Try it there. There. We just watched it pop in. What are we at? 7 point something kilometers. Now I've got a feeling these guys are a bit more on the ball with trying to destroy craft. Uh, we could fire one off right now okay we fired one and now I am going to turn away uh, we're gonna try and keep the oh let's let's keep it gently gently level <laughs> I am bad at flying today bad at flying today I'm normally a little bit better than this just a little bit uh, maybe I turned the wrong direction but at three kilometers in Man, it's not gone towards them. Maybe they don't have any radar on them. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? That would be interesting. I should have unlocked this a long time ago. Uh, okay, well, that's a thing. That is a thing. Let's, uh... Oh, does the reset not straighten me up? It does. Uh, let's move on to our next target, which... Oh, well, target. I keep using the term target. That's not really what we're doing here. Let's uh, move on to the Ar Aracacibo? Aracacibo? I know it's supposed to be Arecibo, like a take on Arecibo, but I'm not sure how we're supposed to pronounce the one with the K. You know, with these sort of distances and no response, I am tempted just to blat out a few, uh, few bullets. I don't think it's going to really do much, especially with my aim, but we should, we should just give it a go, right? Give it a go. Carry on flying forwards now. Uh, we're going to let this load through wow these frames currently coming in at eight frames per second according to my screen right here i'm not sure whether we're going to hit any at all any at all i just i couldn't resist having a small pop uh think they've disappeared now do we think they've disappeared now i don't know well, i mean we're getting even closer let's uh ah oh, my my gun won't took your down there okay we we are done here i think we are done so I've decided it's got to be Arak Ebo, right? Arak Ebo Observatory. I don't know. I, I was trying thinking about this on the whole 500 kilometer uh, journey down here. We have traversed about a quarter of the planet, and we're going to go see what the KSSR's defenses are like here. I don't think we're going to be engaging in any shenanigans. 
uh, mainly because I can't afford the missiles at this point in time. We have somewhere that we actually want to be to do some real targeting. Oh, that was nice. I managed to drag that around a little bit. But we are going to have a look in, look in, see what we can do. More just to get used to using this locking, uh, this targeting system. It is a little unwieldy when you're flying. But if we lock like that, where do you reckon he's put his drones? Um... I bet they're in amongst the buildings. That sounds like something Boris would do, right? Uh, is that one over there? I'm going to lose gimbal lock soon. No. Okay, let's pull this back. Let's let's just go and have a visual uh, reconnaissance. I'm not sure how close to get. Also, you can't see that. We just discovered that at the last place. You can't see them until you're seven kilometers away. Uh, do I want to keep some height up? I think I do. I think I do. Uh, as I say, this is just checking out defences. We've seen uh, his defences, not not that we would watch anybody else's videos to get any sort of advantage, but we have seen vi uh, almost all of their turrets beforehand. All right, let's put this back on. What is the maximum downwards angle we got on this? It's quite good, actually. It's quite good. Now, I believe somewhere about there is where we're looking for. No, that's a radar dish. This is locked onto his building. That's not what we're after. Hmm. Can't quite see. I know there was one in here somewhere. There's got to be one on the launch pad or something like that. Surely everybody lo uh, puts turrets on their launch pad. It's not just me that ah invites explosions. Look at this right here. Is that him? I can't get any closer than that. That oh, gimbal limit lock. Uh, locked me out oh well we know where they all are yeah I had that lined up perfectly and now onwards to uh, a certain other base before we discuss our last immediate neighbor we need to talk about a nation far removed from the hostilities happening right on my borders all the way on the other side of the planet we have the proud nation of Gregistan Intercepted radio communication indicate that this nation only has one advert on one channel with no programming. There is a small angry man repeatedly screaming about the pride of this nation. It's all a bit strange, really. Returning to the country immediately to the west of Franco Moyoin, we have the Echelon of the Iron Core. A nation that rose from the ashes of a failed communist regime, the survivors being those who hoarded all the material wealth that they could. And of course, the leaders of old said regime. Only a few thousand Kerbals remain in this barren and wasted land, seeking their next paycheck. So we're about 100 kilometers away from our intended target, and the first thing I am noticing is the immense amount of mountains around. This may make targeting very awkward indeed. We're still going to try our best because, you know, the people have spoken, and so we're going to try and make it a Thing. I would like to lock on somewhere like that. I'm, I'm very intrigued to know what, where it's going to lock. Uh, in fact, it's not at all. Uh, let's try and speed up a little bit. Things can go a little bit squiffy this way, especially up at the um, mid 300s meters per second of course things do have a habit of going uh, very squiffy which gives you some sort of idea of how long I've been doing this you can see the mission timer up there an hour 17 very rarely have I used the times to caught up with a lot of podcasts though okay this over here this is my my territory uh, that one there and this is uh, Callum the echelons of iron core so that's going to be interesting. We get to see what's going on there. I think something like that, if we can get a lock. Okay, no LR. I'm not sure what the L or the R stand for. I'm sure someone can let me know in the comments, though, and I will be forever grateful. Now, we're going to have a long wait until things become visible. Though, look, there's a nice little base down the bottom there. But yes, a long way to go yet, yeah, 50 kilometers or so. Honestly, not sure what the range on all my missiles are. I'm expecting these two to do the ma uh, majority of the damage, the uh, harams, harams, however you want to pronounce that. So I'm thinking I will lead with the two hellfires that we have here. They seem to be sort of a nice mid-range missile to launch out. Now, I think I'm going to drop down my nose a bit. I've been flying kind of like this, uh, just on and offing the SAS until we get a good fix on where we want to be. There's still not even any buildings 
come up yet. Okay, let's go a little bit faster. I don't want to go screaming past my opportunity to fight. Uh, there are a lot of targets here. Uh, I think we're going to go for that side one there. It's a Sam. If we could take out a Sam, I think that would uh, leave us uh, in a nice position. Though I have to say, there are a lot, a lot of critters around this base. That's what I'm going to call the defences from now on, critters. Okay, I can't keep a focus and use this at the same time, it turns out. It's probably something to do with the way I click the buttons. But we should be coming in. I'm not going to need this anymore. I want to get onto my flight controls. I do not see the craft. That is, of course, because we are too far away still. Maybe if we throttle down a bit. This is probably a very, very bad idea, thinking about it. I'm going to fire up these. No, nothing to be spot spotted. Nothing to be spotted. I really quite want to... All right, let's pull our nose down. Maybe fire these off then. Anti-radiation missiles. Uh, they're not firing. I haven't armed. Oh, no. Bad times. Bad times. Time to move away. Oh, man. This is this is very bad, actually. Let's troll up a lot. Uh, move the camera around. So, so that was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Oh, it's now firing at me. Let's see if we can't dodge some bullets. Uh, that actually worked incredibly well. Just a little barrel roll. Well, it's not barrel roll, is it? Aile Aileron roll? Elveron roll? I don't know, however you pronounce that. Did one of those. That was pretty good. I think now we're going to try and make our way. That, that was a really bad attack run, actually. <laughs> but there we go. That's what we've got to live with. This is the KSC2, so I'm going to set that as a target. And that's where we're going to go land this thing. Got to say, the fuel economy on this thing has been outstanding really has. I, I'm blown away with how well this does. It's so much so that I do not think we will classify this as an attack craft anymore. No, no indeed. I think what we're going to uh, uh, designate it as is a long range reconnaissance slash bomber. Seems a, a bit more the thing that would work, right? Okay, I'm not sure what it's trying to aim with here. Let's use the laser guided. Let's zoom out a little bit. Where Where is this pointed? Reset this, please. If we could get this around before before we pass the base, that would be great. Zoom in a little bit. Let's see what we can find. There is a defensive structure I would like to launch. There we go. Uh, and fire. Okay, let's pull away. <laughs> or let's lose control of our vessel and end up flying more towards the targets. Actually, I think this is going to go relative... What are they aiming for? Oh, I got a hit. I got a hit. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, I was not <laughs> expecting that. Let's turn those weapons off. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. No missiles came after me. This they, They're the thing that I, th I worry about most. I've got, I've got to admit, is missiles coming for me. So that's my base over there. Green basin. We ooh, ooh. Let's slow down. Did you see that wing flex there? That, that was something to be proud of. In fact, I am going to completely drop the all engine power try and keep this nose up without snapping my wings off that would be great all right i think we're doing okay i think we're doing okay so somewhere let's have a look at this what's this set up for ngsc as green coast okay somewhere over this way we've got a target to aim for i think we want to go basically northeast we can just ease the craft round just a little bit, just a little bit, and then we're probably going somewhere over there. Okay, I'm going to leave this to get set up, and I will see you guys at the KSC2. Having gone round and seen all our immediate neighbours' bases, and now I'm coming in for a coasting landing to the KSC2, I think it's time for our first post-turn analysis. First off, I think it's fairly safe to say that my attack pattern really needs a little bit of work. None of those attacks actually struck home this time. I don't know, I will work on that. During the streams, I've actually been working on how the BD Armory targeting system works with all the viewers. Feel free to pop along on a Tuesday to uh, offer more advice there. As for the turrets that we faced, I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and say 
The USK's JJ's turrets were the better of the turrets that I faced out there as he actually hit me with some bullets as opposed to the others which didn't. Of course, now that I've said that, everyone is going to like super step up their game and I'm not even going to be able to get close to anybody's territories from now on. As for the actual vessel itself, as I say, I definitely feel we need to stop this being an attack craft. It's not designed to... Well, it was designed to go specifically after one uh, target, but now that I've taken it out and giving it a proper test run, it is super over spec for that. So this is now a long range recon slash bomber and we need to spend some time during one of our streams making a single attack target airplane as opposed to what we have already de uh, already designed which of course was the base defense maneuverable plane down in the description below you will find a straw poll leading to a list of options for my next turn who we should go attack where we should go have a look at maybe which uh, bases we should throw extra defenses at but with that i am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this aggressive action i will see you next time where we're going to do whatever it is our democratic peoples vote for bye